So uh, we are still talking about transportation. We're talking about what happens on our roads. Because after many years of bloodshed on Ghana's roads through road accidents, there seemed to be some action to deal with the deaths and injuries. This afternoon, the National Consultative uh, Forum is underway to try and deal with the many challenges on Ghana's roads. And of course, there are a lot of statistics that I've shared with you. I want us to look at it again. The reason why this conversation is very crucial. Number of cases reported from January to September alone, 2021. You look at it and it starts from the reported case stands as 11,858. Number of persons killed, and I want you to look at this statistic very carefully. 2,126 people are dead on our roads between January and September. That's less than a year. Number of persons injured alone on our roads stand at 11,659. This is not something we should joke with. And in the studio with me to do this conversation, of course, I've shared this already with you. In September alone, you have 1,264 people, uh, cases of accidents reported. September, just one month. A number of persons killed in just one month is 235. This is even higher than the people killed by covid in a month. Number of persons injured, 1,315. And Kwabna Ose, who is a road safety advocate, has joined me in the studio to do more on this. Uh, so say thanks so much for your time. Mm -hmm. You are coming from the consultative forum, yes. uh, which the biggest forum to deal with all these challenges on our roads. Share with me highlights of this meeting. Okay. Our main concern is uh, their intention to amend Regulation 134 of the current regulation. Okay. Yes. And Regulation 134 simply states that any bus must have two, at least two exits. Okay. And it must be placed on the right side, where in the local plan, parlance we call it uh, driver side. Okay. It goes further to say that if there is no exit at the rail, mm there should be an emergency exit on the left side. Okay. This law has been standing in our statutory books since 1974. Okay. And DVLA, DVLA and other stakeholders have woefully failed to implement this law. So I had cause to take, to institute a legal action against them. So the court compelled them to start implementing the law. Mm. And all of a sudden, they want to amend the law. And I asked them why they want to amend the law. They said they wanted to meet, to meet international standards and, again, to meet manufacturer specification. Okay. But I shut it down because since we started advocating in around 2010, okay. we've got VIP to contact the uh, Scania manufacturers, and they've now provided two two entrances at the right side, mm -hmm. and an emergency exit on the left. Okay. Again, Ghana Education Service and uh, Ghana Education and Ministry of, of Education, for the past two years, all the vehicles they've imported have emergency exits. Yep. Just last week, I went to ONA's uh, station, and I realized that the Kia Grand, Kia Grand bed buses they've imported from South Korea, all of them have emergency exits. Mm -hmm. Again, new plan in Kumasi have started creating this emergency exit for them. And uh, Dr. Bemunua, the vice president, donated some bars to Ghana School of Law. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student there. I prevailed upon the transport officer. They took their bus to Kumasi and they have they've, they've provided emergency exit for them. So uh, what the Minister of uh, Transport is saying, it's not starter. Mm. It's not starter. Okay, so uh, is it that it, is it only this a part of the law that is going to be revealed? And what is the reason of the ministry uh, wanting to reveal this? Have they given you any reason yet? As I said, they said they want it to meet international standards and, well, and manufacturer specification. Okay. And I've shot the manufacturer specific, uh, specification down. And in uh, regards to the international standards, I don't think we should take the team wholesale. We should tailor it to suit our condition. Yep. This is a situation 
I, I even send them some videos of a bus that had been involved in an accident, and the passengers were being pulled through the windows. But they failed to show, uh, to show the video today. I insisted, but they said no. Okay. Because they didn't want the public to know what is happening. Mm. In fact, I had information that these uh, this transport owners have been lobbying government to scrap this very law. So I wasn't surprised when they came out uh, to say that they are going to scrap this law. Mm. And, and replace it, it with what? One door. That long bus, one door. Wow. And, and how are and they, your they are, other colleagues they, reacting to this? That's why I'm here. I, I, I think the argument I, I, I raised there, everybody was happy. They would claim they would, they would provide hammers. And I, I'm telling them that if you provide hammers and you provide exit at the rooftop, they should be complementary to the door. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the, hammers, the hammers have warned them. If they're not careful, the slightest mishap, people will start breaking the, the, the windows, and the, it will create problem between the owners and the passengers therein. Mm. Again, someone who is traumatized, do you expect that person to jump down from that level to the ground floor? Yeah. I just don't understand. In fact, because when STC imported, we we're about to import this hundred, latest hundred buses, I wrote to them to ensure that it meets specification. Mm. They came, they imported the vehicles with that specification. So I, I wrote to DVLA that they shouldn't touch the bus. But strangely, they lances the bus. And I was in the process of mobilizing money to sue them for contempt, to cite them for contempt. In fact, yesterday, just yesterday, I went to my lawyer and I've collected my five. Because my lawyer is, for political reasons, he doesn't want to handle that very case. But another lawyer is prepared to handle the case. So maybe in the course of the week, I'll send a, uh, the brief to him so that we, we cite Attorney General DVL STC for contempt. But but you've you've raised this issue at yes, the they, forum. Yes, they and, and, uh, they are where to. Do you know whether I mean it's something because I mean they have invited people yes. to bring an input into the new law. So as you've uh, taken your concerns, uh, definitely uh, it's something that they should they yes, should, they, they should they deal said, with. They are said, you having a they sense? They said we, we, we should we should hold on and that there will be further consultation. But at, as I said. I had an insider information that these people had lobbied the government. And when I realized, when I, I got to know that this thing was coming, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised. They've, in fact, lobbied the government to change the law so that it sues them. Fancy a bus carrying 40 people with only one exit. Mm. And unfortunately, fortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, these exits are usually at the front. So at the slightest impact, and some of them are automatic, at the slightest impact, it gets locked. Mm. It gets locked. Okay. And these people have to find their way out. The pictures I saw, if the, if, uh, the bus had caught fire, all the people have, would have perished. And nobody seems to care. Last time I told the minister that maybe, excuse me, because you don't board some of these buses, you don't have feeling for the ordinary bus, and then he asked me to retract the statement. You know, I, in fact, I retracted it reluctantly. Mm. But that's a fact. Okay. That's a so, fact. Okay, so this is one issue which you wish to take yes. up in court. Yes. And in, in the coming days, I mean, exactly when would you take up this matter in court? In fact, I had wanted to see something positive during the, the meeting. The, during the meeting. Mm. But looking at things, I think I have to act fast. Okay. Even, even if they pass this law, I'll go, I'll go back to court based on the human rights issue. Because you can't come 40 or 50 people in one compartment and provide them with a single door. I think it violates Article 15 of the 1992 Constitution. Okay. Yes. And no. I cited it in my writ. Okay. I cited it in my writ. And the mm. court found sense in what I said. Mm. But um, you, you said DVLA was instructed to ensure yes. that uh, that law was respected. Yes. And, and you also stated that the Ministry of Education, the buses that they've, they've, brought, they've, they've, they've brought they all recently. have, have emergency, emergency exit. exit. So yes. uh, this in a way shows that probably they are actually implementing it, isn't it? <laughs> they are not implementing it. I went to court in 2011. Okay. And I think in 2017, there was, a, there was an out-of-court settlement and they told them to do this. They to do this. this. But as I speak, 2021, they are still registering buses with, with one, one exit. exit. Mm. In fact, I, I didn't go to court early because I wanted to mobilize money. Now I'm financially sound. I'm going. Okay. I'm going to go. If even I have to go for a loan for this exercise, I will do exactly the same. Okay. We, we wish you well in this exercise. But let's also look at some of the issues that were deliberated upon at the um, 
the forum. For you, what are the critical uh, my, issues? My, my other area of there? interest was with, with this reflective tips, that yellow tips, the strips around vehicles. Mm. As the law stands now, uh, vehicles with more than 3.5, vehicles with a tonnage of 3.5 are supposed to be strapped. But I said no. We should, they should bring the tonnage down so that it can cater for something like Hyundai Grace, the category. Mm. Because the intention is that when the car develops a problem on the road, we should be able to push it to safety. Okay. So if the law should stand as it, as, 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 as it stands now, mm. it means some, some vehicles like Splinter, it shouldn't have those trips around, around them. And I tell, I'm tell, i telling you, it has saved a lot of lives. This retrograde, because in the night, it makes the car very conspicuous. Mm. So I had wanted them to reduce the tonnage. But somehow, yeah. I think they will consider it. Mm. I think they will consider it. Okay. And, consider it. and talking about the reflectives, uh, that is helping deal with some of the accidents. Mm. There's also the bit about cars that are involved in accidents that are left on the road yes. unattended to. And I know that also came up there, the towing yes. bit. What, what was the discussion at the meeting? Yes. I wrote a proposal to National Road Safety Commission, I think 2010 or 2011. In fact, this issue of even the towing exercise was my baby. Okay. It was my baby. But somewhere along the line, they brought the private sector in. I told them that this very issue, it borders on safety. And especially those whose cars are broken down, it's not the one they kill. It's, they are innocent third parties. Mm. So the government should intervene. They brought in Zoom Lion with this big, big trust. And what I said played out. Because someone car will develop a problem, you tow it to safety. You can't retrieve the money from that person. You will not even see him. That's why some, some cars develop problems. Sometimes it stays on the road for a, a month or two. So our contention is that the government should absorb, it, uh, absorb this thing. Whether, I don't know how they will do it. I think they can collaborate with the insurance companies who are the ultimate beneficiaries mm. to implement this exercise. Mm. All right, so, um, for, so you think that what they are proposing there is not what will resolve our issues? They, they claim before you register a car, that is their proposal, you, re register. you, have, to, you have to register with an insurance company mm. or I think a towing service. Okay. But someone may register in a car. You know, this towing service, they are not spread nationwide. The fact that I've registered my car in Accra does not preclude me from taking my car to Boko. Yeah. So if it's a national thing now, in Boko, they will have that services there in Tamale. They will have that service there in Axim. They will have that service there. That's why I want the private sector. And the private sector, their main objective is for profit. Yeah. And that may compromise safety. So solely government must take up. That is, that is my... Uh, in the new, I think they are thinking of also the drivers themselves taking responsibility of uh, this towing and all that, or the car owners. Yeah, the car owners. And I'm saying that when a car develops a problem on the road, it doesn't kill the car owner. Yeah. It kills people like you so and so myself. So, yeah. so the government should intervene. Mm. They should find money. Mm. They should find money and implement this. Okay. Um, all those uh, disabled cars from the road. Okay. How they do it, it is left to them. So f for you, left to you alone, we should leave what was in the old law untouched. Regards? With regards to towing. The towing, I don't think that they have made provisions. In, in the law. So it's something that we should. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So um, Transport Minister Koko Furi Asiyama has been speaking on this matter. Listen. Good morning to all of you. I want to begin by thanking all of you for making time to join us here today for this all important national consultative forum on road traffic crashes and a review of the Road Safety Act and regulations. Those joining us online via through Zoom, Facebook, and other platforms I am indeed very grateful that you could find time to be part of this important program. Ladies and gentlemen, nine years ago, the Road Traffic Regulation 2012, LI 2180, 
was passed by Parliament to give effect to the Road Traffic Act 2004 at 6.83. The regulations were, were fashioned out to replace the 1974 Road Traffic Regulation LI-953, LI which over time fell short of provisions to address trends in the road transport industry, particularly with respect to road safety. It provided for a more comprehensive regulation of road traffic and road use to ensure safety on our roads, including but not limited to the following. Regulating the registration and licensing regime of motor vehicles, driving schools, and driving instructions. Prescribing maximum speed limit for motor vehicles of any class or description, and to provide for exemptions in special cases. Prescribing the nature of and procedure for inspection of motor vehicles. Prescribing the specifications and installation of seat beds. Regulating the use of mobile phones while driving a motor vehicle or riding a motorcycle or bicycle on a road. Removal of broken down or disabled or abandoned vehicles. Prescribing procedure to be taken in the interest of safety, security, and convenience of, pu of public traveling in motor vehicles, or otherwise using roads and providing for periodic inspection of motor vehicles. Last but not the least, providing for the payment of sport fines and offenses for which sport fines are levied among others. Ladies and gentlemen, over the years of implementation, a number of issues have been introduced to give effect to regulations. Key among them are one, reforms in the driving licensing administration with the introduction of driver licensing systems and the new vehicle registration systems. These have led to a new workflow and reduction in fraudulent practices as well as revenue leakage. Introduction of Skizarize Road Wealthy Certificate to facilitate enforcement and reduce fraudulent practices. Increased funding for the National Road Safety Authority to scale up and safety programs, to scale up road safety programs and activities. Nationwide training program for commercial vehicle drivers. Despite these interventions, it has become apparent that some of the provisions of the regulations need to be reviewed and enhanced where necessary in view of some identified technical and legislative deficiencies as well as implementation challenges that have emerged. It has also become necessary now more than before, to introduce new provisions in line with development trends, changing social norms and values, and to ensure conformity with international conventions and ECOWAS protocols on road transport. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this National Consultative Forum is twofold. First, as I said, it is an opportunity for all of us to dispassionately discuss the issues on road safety and recommend practical measures to government for adoption and consequence implementation. This forum will also allow the press to devote some time to focus on one of the core issues that matter to, to our listeners, viewers and readers. Again, and most importantly, it is an opportunity for us to make input and suggestions on proposed amendment to the Road Traffic Act and regulations to ensure effective regulation of the sector and promote safety in the country. 
And you heard the Ofori Siyama, he is Transport Minister, speaking at uh, the consultative forum to deliberate on the things that happen on our roads and make inputs into revising our road traffic regulations laws. But um, we'll still go back and listen to the DVLA uh, boss, uh, Kwesi Buzia, who's also at that uh, meeting. We'll hear from him. But Kwabna, I understand the passion with which you speak. And I, I want to agree with you because this has some human interest. You can't put people in a long bus the and boss. have uh, and just have only one exit yes. point. But also, again, if they want to meet international standards, you and I know that elsewhere, even the enforcement bit is different from the way yeah, we... The response, the response to emergency too is very swift. It's, it's very swift compared to yes. what we do here in Ghana. What came up with regards to enforcement of our laws at the meeting? Did any, anything as, of that sort? As, as usual, the police were there and people were giving it to them left and right. And they said they are going to take measures to see that the right thing is done. But I'm doubtful. Political interference. Did, did, did they enumerate the challenges they have in ensuring that we enforce those beautiful laws that we spend time to put together? Let, let, let me use this to explain what you are saying. There was an issue with police collecting lances from drivers. Mm. The law says uh, before you can detain a driver, a driver lances, the mm. current law, mm. you should be of the rank of inspector and above. Okay. But you all know, any constable or any couple will just press your lances yeah. and you will take it. Mm -hmm. So if you are not able to enforce, to implement even this, yeah. how much more uh, the bigger one? Okay. Uh, well, enforcement let, is a problem. Right. Let's cross over to uh, the event. Uh, Chief Executive um, Office of the DVLA, Kwesi Buzia, is on. Uh, let's hear from him. Honorable Deputy Ministers for Transport, Honorable Adum and Honorable Tampoli, Honorable Kofi Ahankra, Parliamentary Select Committee, Dr. Sesu Mensa, DG MTTD, Madam Mabel Sego, the Acting Director of the Ministry for Transport, the Director for Policy, Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation at the Ministry of Transport, Madam Irene Mesiba, important stakeholders, GPRTU, Potua, colleague, CEOs and DGs, senior managers and staff of NRSA, MTTD, NIC, DVLA, friends from the media, general public, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege to be here this morning to participate in this very important exercise. A stakeholder consultative meeting to review sections of the Road Traffic Regulations 2012 LI 2180 to discuss and address implementation challenges and to also take a step back and assess the relevance of some of the regulations and incorporate new and emerging practices in the management of the road transport industry. It is an undeniable fact that road transport plays a critical and central role in every society. Nearly all the goods and services needed for everyday life are transported by road. Daily travel to work, to school, for leisure, and other purposes are largely facilitated by road transport. This movement of people and goods, however, when not carefully managed, come with unimaginable loss to individuals and families, causing immeasurable distress and loss of life. Road traffic crashes not only debilitate families because of the loss of a loved one, but also deny the country of a critical human capital needed for national development and growth. The fact is, risky behaviors of drivers 
associated with road traffic crashes left unchecked do adapt to change in societal dynamics and growth. It is therefore necessary that our road traffic, law, traffic laws, safety laws be updated to be relevant and consequential to the ever-changing times of the transport landscape. Risks such as mobile phone use while driving, unsafe and unregulated speed limits, driving under the influence of alcohol and drugs, general driver inattentiveness, and non-compliance with seat belt and child restraint laws have emerged as some of the leading causes of fatalities in Ghana. You had the DVLA boss um, speaking at the consultative forum. So, uh, Ms. Ose, aside the matter you're taking up in court with regards to emergency exits in our, our commercial buses, what do you want to see at the end of this consultative forum? Mm. As I said, when you look through uh, the proposed amendment, it is primarily because of this one exit. The others are non status mm. It is primarily because of, of this. Uh, that is why you think this yes. whole meeting is yes. ongoing? Yes, because I had prior information that they've lobbied uh, government and that something was in the pipeline. Mm. So when I learned that they were holding this thing, I wasn't surprised. So immediately I got the document, I looked through, and I saw that they wanted to touch 134. So I asked them why. This thing I have not been able to implement, so why should you change it? And they raised this manufacturers, and I shut it down. And international standards said, no, if you tell us the thing to suit our conditions, mm. you don't have a response, uh, our uh, response to emergency yep. is poor. It's not zero, it's negative. Mm. And I cited the case of this STC bus, which, which was involved in an accident at Commander Junction, at 1 a.m. It was not until the following day, the following morning, 6 a.m., that the rescue operation went there. The people would have been dead yes. by the time. Yes. International standard means immediately there should be a response. Yeah. But this is the situation. We waited for about five or six hours before rescue operation started. So my my major concern is this one one exit, but I'll fight it tooth and nail. I'm grateful for your time and wish you all the best in your effort to get this thing done. We'll give you all the support that you need.